Hi, chemistry students. I want to talk about completing acid-base equilibria problems. And in this particular video is to introduce you to what's called a small X approximation. And it will make sense if we do it within the context of a problem. So let's go ahead and do an example problem. And it starts with this. Whenever we do an equilibrium problem, it's always the same. It doesn't matter whether we're doing it for acids, bases, gases, K sub P, K sub C, it doesn't matter. We're going to build an ice table. We're going to fill that ice table with the known information. We're going to determine Q, compare it to K, somehow find the way the reaction will shift to reach equilibrium. Then complete the ice table, write the equilibrium expression using that equilibrium row from the ice table, and then finally solving for the unknown, whatever that is, in our expression. All right, so here's how we go about doing things in a, uh, a problem that's got acids and bases. Um, oh, by the way, the worst part about solving one of these things is that when we get to the end, you might have the quadratic equation or even worse, something that requires a computer to solve. Our goal today is to simplify so that we don't have to necessarily do the quadratic equation, but still get an accurate answer. All right, so here's the example problem. What's the pH of a 0.1 molar solution of some acid, HX, with some given Ka of 5 times 10 to the minus 7? I'm going to go through the full solution here very quickly. Uh, this, so this is a good example of how we go about solving one of these problems. And just to remind ourselves, we're going to build an ice table. Then we're going to fill in that ice table with the known information. In this case, we know that there's some acid to begin with that we put in there. We did not place any hydronium ion in the, into the container. We did not place any of the X minus into the container. So they're at zero. That's what we're imagining them being at zero. We then solve for Q and compare it with K. So Q is equal to zero in this case. And we know that that means when Q is less than K, we're going to shift to the right. That's what's going to happen here. Once we know that, we can complete the ice table because we can fill in our minus X plus X plus X to go along with shifting to the right. And then we can fill in our equilibrium row. Last thing we would do then is write that equilibrium expression from the equilibrium row. And that's what I've done down here. As you see, here's the equilibrium expression in full. And then right below it, I've substituted in all the things from my equilibrium row right here. The last thing we need to do is solve for it. And this is where the math gets a lot of fun. What we end up doing is we have to cross multiply the point one minus X over. Then we have to rearrange things after we um, distribute that along and we end up with a quadratic equation which we end up plugging into our formula that solves for X and we get an answer of 0 0.000223 molar. You can go ahead and look at that. The math is correct. I've checked it. Um, the key thing is that's a lot of work and there might be something we can do about it. But let's finish the problem first. Our goal was to find the pH according to our ice table right here as you can see, our hydronium ion concentration, which is related to our pH, is X. So by solving for X, we have solved for the hydronium ion concentration. That said, that means we can find the pH by taking the negative log of our hydronium concentration, which is just this factor X. And we get, point, we get 3.65 as our answer. I want you to notice something, though. Now that I've done that, what if I go back and I look at this value right here? 0.10 minus X. Let's actually do the math. And if we do the math, check it out. If we take 0.10 minus X and we round it to necessary sig figs or anywhere even close, this rounds up to 0.10. In other words, X is so small that it's not even affecting the size of, of our initial concentration of HX. So because the equilibrium constant is small, it's 10 to the minus seventh, because of that, very little product is made. And we can kind of, why can't we just ignore that X? I mean, think about it. it. This says that when we're finished, that X made no difference to this concentration. So why don't we try as a solution to the problem to simplify it, why don't we ignore this X right here? Why? Because it's being compared to a very large number. Once again, our equilibrium constant is small. That means X is going to be small, and in this case, it's going to be small enough that we could ignore it compared to this relatively large number of 0 0.10. Let's rework the problem from that point of view. So here we are back with the same exact, the same exact ice table. Nothing has changed in this matter. Nothing has changed at all. 
The next step was to write our equilibrium expression and substitute our pieces in, but the difference is going to be when we substitute in from the equilibrium row, we're going to make notice that because our equilibrium is very our equilibrium constant is very small, it's 10 to the minus 7th, that we can ignore x. And when we ignore x, this side of the equation simplifies to x squared over 0 0.10. By the way, you should show this work so that you can tell whoever's reading your work that you have made an approximation. I've approximated the left-hand side with the stuff on the right. Well, to solve this is much easier. I now multiply by 0.1 both sides. That makes x squared equal to 5 times 10 to the minus 8th. And to solve for x, I just need to take the square root. That's a heck of a lot easier than doing the quadratic equation. Remember, there's the quadratic equation. That's a lot of stuff. This was not. And look at this. We get the exact same answer of pH of 3.65. That's amazing. So the question is, if this, is, if this works, does it always work? Because we want to make sure that we're using it when we can. Is x always going to be smaller than, small enough that we can ignore it? So let's play around with this a bit. We're going to look at the two things that can change. What can change is our equilibrium constant and this initial value of our concentration. Those are our two parameters that can change. So let's see when our, our approximation, our small x approximation, is applicable. So we're going to change the parameters one at a time. Let's start by changing the equilibrium constant and use the same equilibrium or same use the same initial concentration of the acid. So I'm going to for each of these I'm going to give you a, a new Ka. I'm going to give you the pH that was con, that was created from the quadratic equation and the pH from using the small x approximation. So the one we did was 3.65 and 3.65 for the 10 to the minus 7. If I do 10 to the minus 6, look at that. It still works. If I do 10 to the minus 5th, though, well, I tell you, what, that's pretty darn close, but it's not dead on. It's starting to waver, and now we're getting too far apart. At 10 to the minus 4th, this thing breaks down for sure. 10 to the minus 5th, it's borderline. So one of the things we're going to say is this. If we have a realistic size concentration, 0.1 or greater, then we're going to be able to make our cutoff that if our equilibrium constant is 10 to the minus 5th, the small x approximation is good enough. It's close enough to our real answer that we can use it. All right, another thing we can do. We can change the initial concentration but keep our equilibrium constant the same. I've chosen 10 to the minus 6th sixth, sixth just for fun. So as I use that, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to change my initial concentration. I'm going to solve for the pH using the quadratic and solve for the pH using the small x approximation. And we find that with 0.1 molar, same exact answer. With 0.01 molar, same exact answer. Uh-oh, 0.001 molar, look at that. They deviate greatly and then it gets way out of hand when we have 10 to the minus 4th. So with our concentrations, they need to be fairly large. They need to be fairly large for this to work out. So we're really coming down to if we have a large concentration, we can make our, we can make our approximation start at 10 to the minus 5th. However, if we have a low concentration, we're going to need an even smaller, we're going to need a smaller equilibrium constant for this to work. Let's summarize everything. You can use the small x approximation when Ka is really small, let's say 10 to the minus 5th, all right? You can also use it when the um, acid or base concentration is large, and large is relative here. It means 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, 0 0.09, something like that or 1.4, those are, those are all good and what we would call large concentrations. So why do we use this thing? Just recall that we're using this small x approximation to simplify our calculations. We're not gonna use the quadratic and we're not gonna do this, we're not gonna lose any accuracy. Okay, with that in mind, why don't you try this problem right here? See if you can get an answer for this and stop the video, give it a try and use the small x approximation if you think it's applicable and uh, then you can start the video again and you'll see the answer all written out for you. So here you see the answer is 3.73 uh, using this small x approximation and that actually works out just fine and matches if you'd done the quadratic as well. So I hope this helped you out in learning how to do an equilibrium problem for an acid and base and something with a small equilibrium constant. There's another video uh, upcoming on base equilibrium to help you 
do these kind of problems as well.